My name is Gregory Abel, and I am a hematologic oncologist based at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. My name is Gerald Hahn. I am a molecular stem cell biologist, and I lead a lab that is interested in aging in the University Medical Center of Groningen in the Netherlands. Doctors Abel and DeHaan are among the authors contributing to the blood review series on hematologic disease at older age. As the population ages, there are going to be more and more treatments that we want to give uh, patients who are older and trying to understand their physiologic age and whether they can tolerate such treatments is becoming more important in oncology and also of course in hematologic oncology. Uh, so we were thrilled to be asked to be part of this. I and my colleague Dr. Heidi uh, Kleppen uh, from Wake Forest to review the literature on frailty and hematologic malignancies and, and uh, talk about how we can assess frailty and incorporate it into further research. The field has progressed quite dramatically where maybe you know 15, 20 years ago it was all pretty descriptive so one would observe that things go downhill with age but now we have a you know, much better molecular understanding of what you know how stem cells age so we believe that some of the maybe most of the deleterious events that happen during aging in the hematopoietic system already originate at the level of the you know, most primitive stem cells. So it's things that go wrong there where the stem cell needs to decide you know, what to do, where it makes wrong choices, right? And therefore that can lead to, in, uh, to an excess or a, or a, or a deficiency of, of uh, peripheral blood cells that are ultimately then you know, culminate in pathology. Just as the stem cells age, the rest of the body is aging as well. And uh, some of those processes lead to diseases, hematological malignancies, which themselves can result in frailty. But we also have to deal with the other issues that patients have that can make them frail when disease arises in them. And so we're looking towards moving uh, to better definitions of what patients can tolerate in terms of treatments. And this is why we're trying to rigorously assess frailty uh, in, in better ways, in both disease-specific ways uh, and for patients in general who have blood cancers. When it comes to aging, my own lab and many other labs are interested in how the epigenome changes. Basically, the epigenome specifies what, what types of genes a cell will use and what types of genes a cell will not use. And so um, during development, but also during aging, it is quite clear that epigenetic changes happen and therefore you know, genes may be not expressed or are expressed. And so that insight has uh, led to a massive interest, not only in the molecular mechanisms that specify epigenetic, the epigenetic machinery, but also to find compounds that affect that, right? And such compounds exist. Actually, such compounds are used in the clinic. Uh, right, and so this is early days, but I think it's very conceivable that actually, you know, there's a future for these types of compounds, particularly maybe in, in frail patients that may not be able to tolerate, you know, the classical broad spectrum toxic drugs that just kill any dividing cell in our body. Some of the emerging uh, developments that are happening is that we're seeing more and more uh, markers of frailty and measures that are actually specific for different diseases. There's one now that's created specifically for multiple myeloma, starting with clinical trial data and then validated in patients who actually hadn't been through a clinical trial, what we call real-world data. And this um, scale that we have for myeloma um, is terrific in terms of really helping us predict which patients will do well or not do well. And it, it has age in it, but it also has many other factors uh, that we consider um, in terms of how we treat patients. There's been more and more studies of patients with different blood cancers uh, and the effect that um, bringing frailty into their assessment can have in terms of predicting how they survive. Genetic events, you know, are very likely to be uh, present in cells years if not decades before a patient presents with a disease, right? And so this, this is, I think, also an interesting um, data, recent data, where people have basically looked in blood samples that have been stored, right? And now one, one looks in these blood samples and, and assesses what genetic events have happened in these blood cells that were stored, and now retrospectively look, you know, what happened with these people, right? And so you can see that some of these mutations have been present, you know, decades before the patient presented with the disease. 
many of the, the techniques that we use to assess frailty are relevant to other areas of hematology. You know, a, a thrombosis hemostasis, for example, um, anemia, which was another um, of the series that was uh, discussed. Anemia in the elderly is different than anemia in younger folks. So there's certainly aspects of frailty that affect all fields. We provide an overview in, a, in, a, in our paper of, of the molecular insights of the last, I think, 15, 20 years, but also, you know, up to very recent developments such as clonal hematopoiesis and what that means and where that may lead to. With also, you know, a, a perspective to see what of these changes could potentially be reversible. What I'm hoping is that people realize that the uh, sort of status of geriatric hematology is advancing. We are able to measure uh, people's uh, robustness or frailty, depending on which way you look at it, with rigor, and that there are many studies that show that these measurements tell you a lot about how people will do with treatments above and beyond the other measures that we have of uh, disease risk. And hopefully these will be incorporated into future studies and also into the clinic. Please find this review series and other blood content on bloodjournal.org. This presentation is copyrighted by the American Society of Hematology.